Wonderful. Welcome, everyone. I'm glad you could join us. Hopefully, everyone can hear us good. Wonderful. And um, shall I start? Yeah. Okay, so here with me, I have Ryan Vellis, who's a member of the US Chess Executive Board. Hello, everybody. And we also have uh, Pete Karaginis, who is a US Chess staff, um, who is also uh, going to um, help us with the online rating uh, questions. Good evening, uh, everyone. Hi, Pete. And we have Marty Grund representing Internet Chess Club. Marty, are you here? I am. Hello. Hi, Marty. And of course, uh, a big welcome and thank you to Carol Meyer, who's uh, organizing this whole webinar. So thank you, Carol, uh, for your support. And uh, so let's start. Um, if you guys uh, OK? And ready. So this whole idea of uh, holding webinars to um, organizers. Um, yes, and my name is Judith Stare. I'm the chair of the clubs committee, and uh, I'm working with chess clubs and run um, general manager of Mechanics Institute in San Francisco. And I've been working with Ryan. Ryan is the executive board liaison to our committee, and. Um, we have put together a guide to a successful chess clubs. And I was thinking one day that wouldn't be really good that now we have all these downtime at home to start the webinar series of uh, guide organizers, how to run tournaments, how to start tournaments and uh, kind of mentor them. I've been mentoring uh, small clubs um, and guide them how to start uh, club tournaments, smaller club tournaments, um, but I thought that it would be a good um, chance with everything being online now to start these webinars. And then uh, when we started talking, we decided to let's do the online tournament at first because that's the most crucial one nowadays. So we are going to cover online tournaments, how to run online tournaments and what are the little tips and tricks that we would like to um, for everyone to know and, and pay attention. And then uh, the second part of the seminar in two weeks will focus on uh, over the board club tournaments, uh, small, small tournaments. So today we are going to talk about online tournaments. Um, we are going to um, review the different platforms, the three different platforms that uh, we would um, recommend at this point. Um, which platform to choose and then more focusing on not the platforms itself uh, but how to do an online tournament regardless of where you are what are the considerations uh, that you have to think through when you're setting up the tournament what are the pre-tournament lists that you should go through and what are the things that you should do during the tournament and of course, a major part of the organizer work is after the tournament. Once the tournament is over, your job is not over yet. Um, just as over the board tournament, you have a lot of work to do after the tournament. This is the same with online tournament. We will touch base um, the fair play questions um, and um, a little bit of the um, what we recommend for kids and uh, we'll close the webinar with question and answer. So hopefully the webinar itself will last roughly an hour and then we'll have plenty of time to go through question and answer. Um, so at this point, uh, I want to, the first slide I wanted to take is to really say that any platforms that you might choose, the very first what is child security, um, and make sure that the, the platform is secure for kids. If you are uh, hosting this for young kids, hosting the online tournament for young kids, that has to be your number one priority. As a mom of three girls myself, 
I I would not let my youngest one up on uh, chess.com because it's it's for for adults or respect or or um, older kids. So just make sure that um, you choose a platform that's good for kids. Uh, Chesskid.com is safe uh, for kids, and it's good for uh, about rated around 100, give or take. It has a clear guardianship, uh, parent control, and that's why I first and foremost I wanted to say that that if you have a child and if you're working with children, just make sure that you uh, choose the appropriate platform. And then we have, of course, the three main ones, the chess.com, Lee Chess, and, uh, and ICC. That's really for everyone. And um, you can go there uh, using your name and your full profile, or you can be anonymous. It's connecting everyone around the world. And of course, there are other uh, platforms that um, there are, they exist. It just, um, we won't have time to cover those. Um, so first I will mention a few things about chess.com and then I will uh, give the panel to uh, Ryan who will cover Lee Chess and then Marty who will cover ICC. And again, as full disclosure, um, we are not uh, pushing one platform or another. We want you to get some information about all of the platforms that we've tried to cover now and make your own decision. Um, and. Um, everything is good for one reason and then um, might not be good for another reason so it's really up to you and your special um, circumstances that you might have so choose choose uh, according to the information that you can get um, so chess.com um, in order to run a tournament you have to set up a club and then once you set up that club which is really easy you can invite your players um, there are um you have to invite your players to that club and only those players who are member of your online club so the club that you set up only those can play so we always often say that tournament is a club function so you have to have a club in order to run a tournament um, chess.com has live tournaments which uh, anyone within that club can uh, play um, and then they have daily tournaments, which, um, you know, one move uh, per every day or one move every five days. So that's slow chess. Um, obviously, no time control. The time control there is how many moves, uh, how many days you have for one move. Live tournament is more resembling the over the board tournaments um, as with any other platforms. Um, so Chess.com has um, a number of uh, type of tournaments that you can set up. You can set up Swiss tournaments. So according to Swiss pairings, uh, there are rounds. You have to, system automatically pairs the first round. Whoever see they are online, they are paired. And then they have to wait until all the games are finished in order to pair the second round. This is a standard Swiss tournament that you uh, got used to or you're used to in the over the board uh, tournaments in your clubs and um, tournaments. Um, there's also the arena tournament, which is um, as with uh, Lee Chess uh, 2, um, it will, it's, it's basically a, you let everyone in to a virtual room and they just start playing, playing with each other. They start a game. Um, the time control, and then whenever it's finished, they get paired up with someone else. It's not a tournament per se. It's not a, a pairing, a Swiss pairing, uh, or any other type of pairing logic. It's just playing as many games as possible. Uh, you can select a few uh, game types at chess.com. The most popular ones are obviously the, the regular, the standard play, uh, uh, game or the Fisher Random. These are the two most popular ones, in my opinion. And, and time control, you have to set the time control, obviously. There are preset ones, and you can also define your custom time control. Um, the increment is uh, always there. There's no delay in uh, chess.com or anyone else's, I think, but um, others might um, enlighten you with that one, that information. Um, so you can set the time control in minutes and then the increment. Um, in chess.com, the live tournaments can be set up only seven days ahead. 
so you can't really plan out the whole month or you can you cannot set up the whole month uh, you can set up a week ahead you can limit the number of players limit the number of uh, players with certain ratings and obviously you can put in uh, guidance of how many games uh, a player had to play before joining the tournament um, let's um, touch that uh, a little bit later because that's a setting that you might want to uh, make a consideration and um, chess.com obviously have a collaboration with us chess um, so if you run a uscf rated online rated chess uh, tournament on chess.com you need to get prior approval uh, from US Chess and Chess.com. They have a really clear step-by-step um, -step instruction what you have to do and uh, Pete can also answer any question regarding that. Um, so this is Chess.com. Um, I would like to hand over to Ryan uh, who can go through Lee Chess. Ryan? Yeah, thank you, Judith. Um, my name is Ryan Velez. For those who didn't catch it early on, uh, I'm a senior level tournament director, national master, and I'm on the executive board. And I'm going to talk about Lee Chess a little bit because mostly I just play on Lee Chess a lot, but my company that I run, my chess, my personal chess company, um, uses Lee Chess every day at this point. Um, so I wrote up these slides to kind of be like a, you know, minor directions on how to actually use these features. Uh, and I believe everybody was provided this um, PowerPoint presentation in uh, PDF format, at least in your email. So you can use it to go through uh, after you sign up for a Lee Chess account, if that's the platform you choose. Um, but like Judith was saying, the most important thing is child safety. Uh, Lee Chess does have a number of child safety features, just like the other platforms. Uh, the most important one is called Kid Mode. Essentially, when you log in uh, to your child's account, you type in a password, you make up whatever the password it is, and then that disables chat and other certain types of features. Um, and you'll know that kid mode is on because in the top left of the screen, there'll be a little smiley face uh, that indicates that kid mode is on. Um, but anyway, Lee Chess offers a lot of different options. Um, the main thing that it can do currently is it offers uh, team versus team. So like if you have a chess club and somebody else has a chess club, you could uh, log on with your respective uh, teams and play against one another. You can also do um, team turn or team battle tournaments where that, that I've done one. I do those on Fridays with uh, groups around the country. Uh, those get pretty big. There's also the arena style that Judith had mentioned on chess.com is also on Lee Chess. I believe it originated on Lee Chess. Uh, arena, like she described was just a, um, you play as many games as you possibly can in a, in a, a specified amount of time. Uh, it is becoming a preferred way to play online. Uh, I did learn literally this afternoon that um, we have, uh, or uh, that Lee Chess is going to have Swiss tournaments, Swiss style tournaments for anyone who's interested in that. Um, there is no release date for that, but the uh, owner of the website said it will be in a quote, a few weeks. He said that today or yesterday. Um, so that's not there yet, but that will be up hopefully soon because I'm interested to use that feature as well. Um, where it says setting tips, um, those are kind of important. Uh, the, Lee, the Lee Chess vernacular, like a lot of chess vernacular throughout the world, is not 100% standardized. So like they use this term clock initial time. That just means how much time is set for each player. Uh, so you, if you wanted five minute games, you would make that number five. Or if you wanted 30, you would make it 30. Um, and that's important. Uh, one thing that Lee Chess does not currently support is delay. It only has increment. Um, but most people online are generally okay with that. Um, and duration is how long the event runs. That is especially important if you're doing the arena style tournament because that is dependent on how long you do that. So, you know, if you want to play for an hour, you would list one hour for that. Uh, time before the tournament starts is kind of an interesting one. Um, you could put anywhere from like five minutes up to, I think, two weeks. 
uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, you can't schedule tournaments out further than two weeks. Uh, if you were going to do like an advert, like a, a rated event or something, uh, you could certainly advertise your event longer than two weeks out in the real world or on your website. But on Lee Chess, you can't set it up more than two weeks in advance. Um, one thing that I uh, advise is if you choose to go to Lee Chess at the very bottom of the Lee Chess page, they have all of the explanation for how the pairings work and the scoring system and all that stuff. Um, I have used Lee Chess for my company because we actually have lots and lots and lots of new chess players who are not like super tournament savvy. So they're not really looking for a traditional style tournament. They're looking for more just playing online. And that's what the, until Lee Chess actually has Swiss style tournaments uh, in a few weeks, it's, that's what I would recommend this platform for in the meantime, is just getting people to play chess. Uh, Judith, could you go to the next slide, please? Yep. Thank you. Okay, so um, there was a question early on in the chat that I saw about passwords for private events and things. Um, Lee Chess does have that under advanced settings. Um, there's actually a note on Lee Chess advanced settings that says be very careful about changing these settings. And if you run tournaments or anything, I absolutely recommend clicking on advanced settings and looking through everything. Uh, everything is explained. Uh, but, you know, if you if you don't want just anyone coming into your tournament, you know, like a bunch of random people from the internet who have no connection to what you're doing, uh, you can put a password on your event. You just have to give people the password, uh, probably an email format or something, um, you know, in advance of the tournament. Uh, minimum rated games is the number of games you need in order to enter the event. That is a tool for helping prevent sandbagging a little bit. So like if somebody wanted to offer or if somebody wanted to go in as a brand new account, you know, that, that would mess things up if, if that was like a 2200 rated player and, but suddenly they're unrated. So you can specify the minimum number. And the minimum numbers can go pretty high. And I think the minimum I think was 20 and it goes up to like 200 or 300 or something. Um, minimum rating is another uh, control that you can do, which is really great. Uh, you know, if you want to do like a master's tournament or a class A tournament or whatever, uh, that's what that would allow you to do. Um, and most of this stuff on this slide is pretty self-explanatory except for this berserk mode. Um, <laughs> the berserk mode is specifically for uh, arena playing formats. What it does is when you click the button, it halves your time and gets rid of your increment. So if it was a five minute game with three second increment, you would go down to two minutes and 30 seconds and you would have no more increment. And if you win that game, you get like double the points or something. So that's just kind of fun, but you, can, you don't have to have that. You can always um, uncheck that. Uh, for, for little events that are fun, that's always a neat little feature, but not for a serious term. You wouldn't want to do that. Um, so, okay. Um, for the most part, I think that covers it. Uh, actually, I'll do that last one where it says custom date overrides time before tournament starts. There is a custom start date option under advanced settings. If you use that, then it will switch your time before the tournament starts setting. Uh, so that was the only thing that I found that was a little unintuitive initially because uh, I, they weren't called the same thing. So, uh, so there you go. So that's everything that I know about Lee Chess. And I do recommend the format for people who are looking for just playing some chess on the internet. Uh, but pretty much any of these formats are going to be pretty good, I think. So I'll pass it back to you, Judith. Wonderful. And let me stop right there to answer one of the questions that came into chess. So, mm -hmm. and we got this as a pre question uh, too. How can we make sure that only people, um, limited or screened people or, or private group can play in a tournament? Um, since both on leeches and chess.com, only club or in leeches' team team uh, members can play in a tournament basically if you control who you let into your club then you can control who's playing in the tournament so that also means you have to be very careful when deciding what kind of club you're setting up 
are you setting up an open club and anyone can join or are you setting up a club where you have to actually approve a joint request and do you approve those who are anonymous or do you approve those only those who give them um, give you their name or the USCF ID so this is a very uh, very important decision that you should make. Now, as Melissa is asking, sometimes you have a big club, but then only you want one particular tournament. You only want um, a selected number of players to play. We overcome this um, problem by creating a new club. We actually have a club where we, the membership are fluid. We kick people out and we put people in depending on how the invitational <laughs> lineup is uh, working. So when we are playing an invitational uh, tournament with another club, for example, we only invite certain players. And so I'm monitoring the memberships and I'm inviting or removing players from previous invitationals. That's, that's what you have to do. Unfortunately, you cannot limit to a subgroup um, within a bigger club or bigger team. Okay, I think, uh, it, um, let me go to the next slide if I can find my mouse. Yes, uh, so now we should uh, talk about a little bit about the Internet Chess Club and Marty, if you're on the line, if you would like to introduce us to Internet Chess Club. Yes, hello everybody. Um, thanks for inviting us. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Yes. Marty, we have a hard time hearing you. Oh, um, can you talk a little bit? Yeah, um, can you talk a little bit? Yes. Um, now it's good. Now it's good. Okay. okay. All right. Sorry. Well, thanks for inviting us, and I'm um, um, just so we're just celebrating our 25th birthday, um, March of '95, is when we went commercial. Um, during this crisis, though, we're giving it back. We're not charging anyone. Um, we, uh, we are running and have been running for almost seven years USCF rated online uh, tournaments. We use Swiss SIS. Um, we've got real people available all, to, all the time. We've got 12 uh, USCF TDs to accommodate uh, those affiliates or TDs that want to run their events on our site. Um, we uh, certainly are open armed to doing all we can to help in this time. <clears throat> what we've been doing is creating um, an easy access landing page for larger groups, which creates a, 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 a channel for them. Uh, and this group can uh, easily uh, um, be a tournament run on our site. Um, I, before I forget though, I do want to say we've been COPPA compliant for um, uh, underage children for years. There's a child safe mode where uh, all they have available are pull down pat phrases like good game, want to play another, that sort of thing. And the parents have access to um, making sure that that happens when the sign-up takes place. Um, we are um, uh, certainly able to accommodate, well, hundreds of tournaments a month if need be. We certainly are, um, we've been busier than we've ever been since the mid-90s because of this crisis. People all over the world have been uh, coming to us and asking if we can accommodate their their uh, tournaments or clubs or organizations. And we, uh, gosh, we just ran a, a tournament for the women in Egypt today. The FIDE um, organization there has us doing some work for them as well as, um, goodness, um, we're running a tournament for Romania soon and some uh, um, other we set up a, um, a club for Chicago public schools that we've been running tournaments for them uh, all uh, 
uh, spring and uh, are able within sort of a short time period, a week or so, able to get larger clubs and organizations a place to uh, have their, their tournaments easily run. It's just as simple as an email um, with an approximate uh, number of players that the organization might want to run in their tournament, whether it's a single day or multi-day tournament we can run, uh, the number of rounds, time control, whether it's to be USCF rated or not. Um, and uh, all our USCF tournaments are instantly uh, updated from the USCF's site. So pairings are done by way of the existing current rating of any individual uh, that enters a tournament. <clears throat> For those of you who are TDs yourselves and would like to um, you know, take, take uh, and submit grids, we, our grids are in USCF uh, ready format for you to upload. And for those TDs who really like to take charge, we, we're offering training on our site to run those events. Um, what happens is when they, the group has a time uh, set up for their event, they go to the landing page, which can be customized for like the Chicago Public Schools has their logo at the top. It's a simple chessboard and an easy member login. And when the student or, or kids or adults log in, uh, they're already in the group that's going to uh, uh, take part in the tournament. So the TD takes it from there. Um, it's just as simple as a pop-up that says start your game. And the uh, tournament directors are always observing. They're, there's always a time when Johnny wants to go play Xbox, installs the tournament, and they just set the game and move on. <clears throat> Uh, all the games, every game on the Internet Chess Club is monitored for fair play. Um, we have 25 years of experience in that genre, and it's uh, um, something we take seriously. Anyway, um, what am I missing? Goodness. Like I said, a simple email to us with a few questions answered about time controls and, and uh, group uh, organization, who, who you are, and if you have a, a logo. Um, in fact, we're just setting up a tournament for uh, New York uh, juniors with Sophia for next week and uh, made a landing page for her. So any of the uh, kids that log into her landing page will automatically be ready to play in the tournament. Um, you know, we're here all the time. We've got names uh, and faces that are going to be you know, holding the hand and, and uh, training those that want to learn how to run their own. Um, I think it's a, just kind of a one-stop one shop with regard to getting going right now online for any one of your organizations. That's kind of the quick summary, Judith. Thank you, Marty. Um, thank you. Um, we actually had a question uh, regarding quads tournament. And so um, I, uh, we've been chatting on the, on the chat. Um, I believe um, I, no, no, none of the panels, none of the channels can run a quad tournament by itself players need to be able to challenge themselves and add friends and that's the only way that they can <coughs> they can currently do that <coughs> we okay. do run we do run quads and will um it's just a matter of the td knowing um who's going to be involved okay wonderful i actually need to get a cup of water Maybe because <laughs> one of the one of the things, major, main things, 101, right? Webinar 101, you should have a water next to you. So okay. maybe while Sounds David good. is doing that, I can touch on the, the, the question in chat from uh, Chacha 
Nugro, I guess I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah. Um, you don't need prior approval to run an event. You know, uh, as Marty just touched on, if you want to run it on ICC, you can, you can follow the steps uh, that were produced in the slide. However, there are some benefits to um, sort of clearing or registering your tournament, if you will. Uh, one of them is, um, you know, th those games can be monitored automatically for fair play. I'm not familiar with all of the sites, but I know that chess.com automatically monitors all of the, the uh, US chess games that have been registered. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're a registered affiliate running a, running a tournament, those will be monitored for fair play. Um, HS does that too. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. Uh, additionally, another benefit of just registering and saying, hey, we're a US chess affiliate, we're running an event on this platform. Um, an, another benefit of doing that is you can get listed on the various affiliate page uh, pages. Your, you know, your, your club is gonna be put out there for people who wanna re register. And third and finally, you know, it's very important to verify the ID of your players, which has been brought up a couple times in chat as you know, how do I verify the identification of my players? Well, that's very important to do and that's the responsibility of the director. Um, however, if you register as an affiliate, uh, you can also view, uh, actually, I suppose you could do that without viewing, but you can view a list of registered players linked with their usernames. Um, so there are some benefits to doing that, Cha Cha, the, the main one being fair play considerations. Thank you, Pete. So I would like to move away from uh, actually discussing the different platforms and uh, move more like general consideration. Uh, when you're the organizer or the TD of a small club and you've never run a tournament before, online tournament, and now is the time to start doing it because that's how you can connect and bring together your players and connect them with other chess clubs. Um, you should consider a few things. Uh, what type of tournaments you want to run? Do you want to run Swiss tournaments? Or as Ryan said, do you just want them to play? And it doesn't matter what's the pairing logic, it's just play. Or you want to have a, you have a school team and you don't want them to play with each other, but you want to have other challenge, other teams. <coughs> and the other thing is, what players do you want? Do you want anyone? Or do you want players from your own club? So you have to actually screen the players as they join your club. Do you want there, to be, yes? I was gonna say, there was a question that we saw uh, before the webinar where you came up, it says free of entry fee or free or entry fee, I think is what that's supposed to say. Um, there were, uh, basically, if you wanna run entry fee tournaments online, uh, you, you just have to be careful about giving away prizes and things like that because none of the software is perfect in terms of catching cheating and things. I mean, it's as good as it can possibly be, but just be very, very uh, conscious that if you, you know, if you're giving out a lot of money online, it's going to attract those kind of people. So just be aware of that. Uh, all the events that I've run online so far have just been free events for mostly kids, but uh, we did run an adult event. So. Oh, Judith, are you there? Oh, I guess she's step, stepped away. Well, that kind of also goes in with the next thing with rewards. Um, we actually are looking at doing a tournament for kids where we do it all entirely online, but we, um, oh, I see, Judith needs to be unmuted. If somebody could unmute her, she was coughing and she needed to unmute herself. But anyway, the uh, rewards, uh, we're looking at doing trophies online, but the kind of the idea is how do we do that? And we're actually looking at mailing trophies to the kids who win. So you can still do trophies, but there wouldn't be like a trophy ceremony or anything like that. Uh, let's see if I okay, can- Okay, I'm back. Okay, there you go. <laughs> That's okay. You could take uh, over if you need. Wonderful. And so um, let, me, um, let me go back to that. Uh, setting consideration. Um, so the other, um, other consideration, how many players do you expect? Do you expect a small number of players or a large number of players? Um, do you want anyone from your club or do you want only a small portion of the club? Um, do, you want, do you need to know their names and then you really want to screen them? 
the other settings that you always, as with an over the board tournament, is uh, how long do you want the event to last? If you have uh, younger or beginner players, one hour online play is a lot. But you have an experienced club, then three hours, two, three hours is okay. Anything above three hours is a long time for an online tournament. So that's a little bit different than over the board, obviously. Um, time control. Um, you can have bullet, blitz, rapid, or longer time control. Currently, online rated is only blitz and rapid. So when you set your time control, you also have to kind of, uh, in connection with that, you have to decide whether do you want it to be US chess online rated or not. We touched, uh, Ryan touched based on free or entry fee. That's up to you, uh, but if you collect entry fees, that's another uh, duty that as an organizer, you have to do it and you have to monitor who you let into your club, whoever already paid the entry fee. Um, and uh, Judith, you, yes? I would also like to point out something I thought of after I said anything. Um, I don't believe any of the platforms we're discussing nor any platforms that we're not discussing, because there are other ones that we haven't discussed, I don't believe any of them will take entry fees for you. So you have to do that outside of the websites uh, completely. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, that's, yes. that's correct. And then uh, how often wanna, do you want to hold the events? Uh, obviously, um, if you want to have daily or multiple tournaments a day or just once a week, that's also might be a consideration of what platform do you use. Um, we have a uh, questions of uh, can specific run times um, be set. Um, currently, with the Swiss tournament on chess.com, and if it's coming to Lee Chess, I think that's the same, it's automatic. So whenever first round starts, uh, first round finishes with all the games, it's automatically paired. So you don't have to pair, but the downside is that you cannot delay the start of the second round. There's a standard 10 second delay. Um, system pairs you, it, it actually clears the board and matches the people up, the players up, but then you really have to just get started. Um, I, I do know there are a few insider in chess.com who have privilege um, to, to do a little bit different, but it's not by much. So as a standard club organizer, you will have round after round, there's no stopping. So that's also, you have to consider anything more than, uh, well, it depends on what time of time control. If you have blitz very fast, game in two, game in three, you can do probably 12 rounds without 15 rounds without actually getting really bored, really tired, but then longer time control. Um, so I think these are the general consideration um, that we would like to make if, uh, if you guys have anything else, anything, uh, Ryan or Marty? Um, no, no, I've... Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. And then, Oh, I was just going to say that, um, you know, one of the benefits um, with our landing page login for groups and clubs is once the tournament starts, parents and, and spectators can watch without uh, need for an uh, Internet Chess Club account. Um, that's nice. Um, yeah, for chess.com, that's for sure you have to have an account, even if you just want to observe. Um, the chatting, so the players cannot chat. Uh, well, the players themselves, they can chat within each other, but they don't see outside chat. Um, and uh, obviously, outsiders can observe the game. They can even chat among the outsiders, and then the chat will be visible after the, after the tournament. Um, the, uh, we also have a question whether can we use Zoom and then just any kind of chess base or, or uh, um, and then Swiss, um, Swiss sys. Obviously you can do that. We are focusing on making your life easier and kind of automate things and set up a common platform for your, uh, for your players. So you can come up with unique solutions, uh, but we won't have time to cover those, unfortunately. Um, 
So what to do pre-tournament? Once you come up with what type of tournament you want to do, what platform you want to play on, um, and you make your club or team in, um, or, or landing page, whether you choose uh, from these three platforms that we presented, then you have a link and you want to advertise that, right? You have to use emails and advertising on Facebook or email um, blasts and everything. Um, every platform, they must be a part of your club or team or, or group. So you, it's very, very important uh, to do that. Uh, that not only advertise the link for the tournament, but you have to explain to them, you must join the club, you must join the team, you must join the group. Because oftentimes people don't realize that they go, they click on the link and I can't join the tournament. I'm not part of the club. I'm not part of the team. So you, you, have, to, um, you have to communicate this clearly. Uh, the other thing is, um, I don't know about Lee Chess. Chess.com has a one hour uh, prior to the tournament joining time. So if you go there three hours before, you won't be able to join the tournament. So you have to join the tournament within that hour. Ryan, do you know how long is it on, Chess, on Lee Chess? Um, I'm sorry, I was reading questions in the chat. How long on Lee Chess for what? Uh, uh, before, you, uh, before the tournament starts, when can you join the tournament or oh. arena? Um, for arena, it's, well, the ones I've run have always been blitz ones. So generally we just kind of say join immediately, uh, and then everyone can, mm -hmm. you can schedule them as far as two weeks out, or I think there's like a minimum of maybe one minute before it starts. So you have, there's a wide range of how to answer that okay. question. Depending so on it, your it might be different with the platforms. Okay. Yes. Um, and then the second one, um, or the point next point is know your players. Um, when you have a club and you used to running online uh, over the board tournaments, you obviously know your players, right? You go in and you know who is who. On online, it's not, not necessarily the case. So what you can come up with is to have a Google form and say to your uh, club players, please fill this form out so we know. And that's one of the key things too, as Pete said, this is organizer responsibility. If you want to submit your tournament for online rating, you have to know who's playing. So um, there is a, Google Forms are a really easy way to collect uh, responses. Um, so we've been using that with good success. And uh, whenever I will, um, we will start running the regular online rated tournaments. I will create just a, a club uh, specifically who has been verified as who's who. Uh, I know chess.com and US Chess has a collaboration and they provided a very useful Google uh, sheet. Um, Pete, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, sure, so um, verifying your players, this is something I touched on earlier when answering the the question in the chat. Um, we have uh, on the chess.com landing page, there's a link to a list of players who have filled out a verification form. So that verification form is something that you can sign up for you as any US chess member can fill it out. There's a Google doc. Um, you can you can fill that Google doc out, you will automatically be included into the player list. And then as a tournament director, you can simply download or view that list to verify your players automatically. So I'm gonna put a couple of links in the chat. The first one here um, is a direct link to where you can find some of this information. And the second link is a link to the US Chess Tournament Director Club. So if you are, uh, this is on chess.com. If you are on chess.com, um, if you're running an event on chess.com and you would like to access the US Chess ID and chess.com database. Um, you can go here, join the club. There's a link directly uh, where you can observe that information or find, find slash download that information. So I just put both of those links in the chat. Um, the idea here is that it's an easy way for a tournament director to say, okay, player A has this US Chess ID and this chess.com username. So um, you can consider that player verified without having to do any more work. We've already done the work. 
Um, so again, the first link is the one you can visit to find the Google form. If you're a player, you're a player who wants to play in an online event, you go there, you fill it out, uh, uschess and chess.com will verify you. And then the second link is the link to, uh, if you're a tournament director and you want to view that list, go there. Yes, but as Eric uh, asked, uh, it does not include expiration date currently. Um, so that's something that the organizer will have to do as part of the tournament director or tournament organizer duty. So once you have the list of players who are playing, you have to make sure that they um, have updates. Um, they have current memberships. Right, correct. Um, so, um, and so I cannot stress how useful this sheet is. It basically saves you from having to, um, having to collect that Google form. Whenever we started, we had to come up with that Google form. Now US chess and chess.com does that for you. So I, I urge you to join that club and take advantage of that sheet um, because that will give you a really good head start. Um, um, but at the same time, one, if you're a, a club organizer and the club director, you want your club to grow. So an online platform, there will be players who are, who want to be, remain anonymous and um, you have to respect that wish. Uh, we have players, several players who are said that we are regular at your club, but I don't wish to reveal my name and that's fine. So whenever you're, um, organizing and planning tournaments and planning events just keep in mind all the players and all their wishes and or try to offer tournaments that s suits everyone you should offer maybe consider offering online rated tournaments where you have to know who's playing and offer non-rated tournaments where anyone can join even those who wish to be anonymous um, I find it very effective to send out that reminder email a couple of hours before the tournament because we are all busy. We are um, pulled over many directions and so a reminder email can do wonders. Um, so don't be shy of that email. It's not going to be spam, uh, considered spam. It's very effective. Um, but that obviously need, you need to have an email database for that. So start building if you don't have one or if you already have one, just use it. Um, before the tournament starts, I always find it really useful to reiterate um, the tournament settings in the chat. As an organizer, even if I'm not playing, I usually check in before the tournament, quickly reiterate the tournament settings because you're always going to get those um, new tournaments um, tournament players and um, and it's always very good to make sure everyone understands as you would for over the board tournament right you would make your announcement before the first round now you should be a tournament director online too and and announce these things even though you you are actually don't have to pair and you don't have to oversee the, the games um, and um, always reiterate fair play and uh, we'll touch base on that a little bit later uh, too but um it's just never never hurts to say day after day that fair play is the most important thing in online play i in my opinion um and again touching like when uh, what i mentioned in the beginning uh, the players must be a part of your club or team or or group just be ready and be available to approve club requests uh, or these requests because once a uh, tournament starts, you kind of want to have as many players as possible um, and let the players play. Um, then I go to the next slide. Um, so as I mentioned, um, tournaments, whether you run it on any platform, they run it they run themselves. You don't have to pair because it's done automatically. So there's no really TD function during the tournament. Um, as a virtual TD or the organizer, it's, it's good to remind players that there are a certain number of games left in this round, so get ready. I usually say three or two games left, get ready for next round. Um, and, um, and just moderate the chat, obviously. Um, keep them engaged and and um, and obviously remind players about fair play. Um, 
I believe it, it seems ICC actually they do the pairings for you and they do this um, for you so it's actually um, easy that way on that um, platform and and then um, Leech doesn't have Swiss is a Swiss tournament yet they only have the arena tournament arena settings but they are going to have that very soon so that's good and then as a tournament organizer, when tournament is finished and players go home, your job is still remains to go through the games and submit the tournament. So this is no different for online tournaments and take this time to do the post tournament uh, uh, jobs and tasks because this will reward you. They will come back and they feel the customer service is good they will come back. So thank the players for joining, congratulate the winners. Maybe if you have a newsletter, um, highlight their games and highlight the, the tournament itself, remind them about the next tournament. And then once the tournament done, go through the games and search for any big upsets because if their big upsets can happen as is on online uh, over the board tournament. But um, it's um, if the accuracy of the of the game itself is very high and then it's usually not that high then you should ask for a fair play re review if you if you um, reward any prize for uh, prize uh, prizes i would highly recommend those who get the prizes review all their games with fair play um, i know some of the platforms they do the automatic uh, reviewing but as an organizer and if you just run tournaments um, not even non-rated uh, just non-rated tournaments you can uh, submit ter uh, submit certain games for fair play review and don't be afraid it's not you're accusing them but you're you're doing important work for the integrity of the game um, and i believe um even if you don't do that, uh, chess.com and Lee Chess and, and ICC, they randomly scan the games. Um, so if you wait uh, three to four days uh, to submit the tournament, then you can make sure that any fair play violation, they will c catch the, the cheaters during those that time frame. Um, at this point, if Pete or Ryan or Marty, you guys want to say anything about this? Um, nope. I I actually personally haven't uh, rated a tournament yet <laughs> using these systems. <laughs> so no, I don't have anything to add. <laughs> yeah, so let me start a little bit about my experience of rating tournaments and then Pete, I'm sure he has a wealth of knowledge and maybe uh, he can relay some of the information um, from a, a US uh, chess perspective. So. Um, it is a lot of work. It's not as simple as um, on over the board tournament where you pair and you you do everything on Swiss or WinTV and you just submit the tournament, right? If you're online tournament, you not only have to screen the players, whether they are, uh, we know who they are, we know their USCF IDs, but also currently these platforms except ICC but the other platforms, they don't give you the cross tables. They don't give you the tournament rating files. So you have to either input your, um, your results manually on the um, affiliate area, uh, tournament uh, rating report area, or you have to recreate it in the software, which is, it's a significant amount of work. There's no question about that. And I won't lie to you guys. Um, so you have to think about all these pros and cons but at the same time people for some reason they want to have rated tournaments even if it's online and only affecting online rating very important emphasize uh players that it's affecting online rating not over the board and i don't think there will be any chance of any over the board rating to be affected by online play so it's very very um important um the screen for fair play and i i hope uh, pete will touch uh, on that uh, how to to handle cheaters when it comes to submission um, pete do you want to uh, kind of um, take over at this point sure so um basically the the process should go something like this um 
and, and maybe even Marty can speak a little more on ICC, but on chess.com, if you've registered as an affiliate uh, and you've run your event, um, all of your games will be automatically reviewed for fair play, potential fair play violations. If there is one, you will receive a report within 72 hours of the completion of the event. This gives them time to look at every single game that was played carefully and make decisions as needed. So it is advised not to submit your rating report until said that 72 hour window has passed. It is also advised not to submit your rating report, or excuse me, not to pay out any prizes until that 72 hour window has passed and there has been time to review all of the games. Now, in addition to that, um, if you believe there's been a fair play violation, you can also manually report that game. Simply find the game in the, in the tournament uh, report, um, review it, open it up, look through the moves, and there's an option when you are in that individual game window to report that game as a suspicious game. Um, furthermore, when, you're, when you are a TD, you know, if, if you're running an event, sort of as Judah touched on, you know, use common sense, just as you would in, in an over the board event. Uh, if you have a worry, if you have a concern, um, you can report it to the fair play team. Uh, you can monitor that player. Um, use common sense and act as you would in, in an over the board environment. One last thing in terms of rating uh, an event where you fear there has been a fair play violation, again, give it the 72 hours. If during that window, you receive a communication um, that says, hey, you know, this user uh, was flagged as violating fair play, here are the games they were flagged. Here are the games that um, they used assistance. Those games should be marked as forfeit losses when you submit the event online. They should be marked as forfeit loss games. So I think I, I think I covered everything, Judith, that you had uh, touched on. Yeah. Um, if I missed anything, please let me know. No, it's it's and it's very important. And actually, I didn't know because the tournament I submitted. Uh, nobody was cheating and nobody was found cheating. I had to ask Pete today, how do we handle cheaters? So it's very important. Um, so forfeit loss. Um, yeah, when, in, in terms of submission via the rating report, it should be marked as a forfeit loss. Um, I'm just reading here. There was a question yeah. in chat that I think we needed to touch on at this moment. And the um, other thing I want to point out is that um, the other other consideration that you have to think through is um, both chess.com and Lee Chess, they use their own rating system. So when they pair, they pair based on their rating, internal rating, right? Uh, there's no way you can uh, pair on chess.com or Lee Chess based on the US chess online rating, current online rating. So it will naturally be different. So if you build a Swissys file and let Swissys pair, your players, it will be different from uh, from chess.com or will be different from Lee Chess. Uh, ICC, it's my understanding that they actually connect the player's account with the US chess rating. So that's the only platform currently, I uh, it's my understanding, who, who can run um, pairings based on the US chess online rating, right, Marty? Correct. Well, I don't know about the other two uh, or others, but but we are real time pinging the USCF site, and all pairings will be done based on the current um, available rating for their uh, category that we're having the tournament in. Yeah. Um, and 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 just uh, if I'm not mistaken, what we've done in the past seven years of running. Um, these, when we found a cheater, they, uh, and, and I'm not sure about the forfeit loss, but I assume that's what Bill Scott does, um, but they're not allowed to play any, any, uh, any tournaments uh, forward after that's been proven. You know, it's a high degree of, of certainty before any, anything of that sort is, uh, is taken. But my understanding is no further ability to, to uh, play online rated for people who have, um, you know, it's one time and you're out, far as I understand it. Yeah, I think that's also true in Lee Chess. Um, a lot of these platforms also refund rating points to you if you've lost them to a cheater. I know that happens too after their account gets banned. 
Yeah, well, you know, um, yes, uh, I would I would think that's the case as far as the USCF rated games. Now, may, maybe we haven't done that. There haven't been you know hundreds of these occurrences. Sure. Um, but in normal play, you know, with thousands of games being played for fun all day long, we certainly um, award back points that were um, um, robbed, so to speak, by a cheater. Yeah, and I, I know it's the same goes for chess.com as well. So, um, and uh, there have been a few questions about banning and kicking uh, people out. So there's two consideration. You, you have to go with your gut in terms of if you're very certain that someone is not playing fairly, you feel free to act and, and use your best judgment and, and just kick people out from your club said we don't need this player um, or you can wait for for the platform to verify their and screen their games for uh, fair play if they found cheating their account will be closed um, or appropriate action will be taken whatever they choose but you as a club organizer have the ability and the responsibility to screen your players and kick them out I actually kicked someone out recently in the middle of the tournament because I, I was 100% sure that player was not playing fairly, not, didn't follow the fair play policy that we, we every tournament we, we um, emphasize. So do be brave um, and don't, um, I, it's my personal opinion, obviously, but I don't think uh, you should be scared or, or frightened to kick someone out if you, if you think um, that someone is cheating, basically. If I may, um, 25, yes. the 25 years of, of people cheating and uh, we, we just no rate them um, and silence them too if they get nasty. Um, so they can never play rated for fun games, let alone um, USCF rated yeah and and uh, actually the the chatting um, <laughs> direction is heading on to how to ensure fly play and so uh, this is the slide that I uh, we created about just ideas how to how to ensure fly play and how to monitor and kind of be a little bit more stricter is that um, do everything but then don't be hard on yourself cheaters will be there so you cannot fully eliminate cheating because people will find ways but you you can do a lot of things you can educate reiterate cheaters will be caught it's not worth it you can monitor the games uh, upsets accuracies and so on and you can submit games you yourself for review as well as um, as pete said it's automatically reviewed if you're um, if you're a verified uh, organization you can instate um, player monitoring. You can do one video call um, where the video points to the player's face, or you can do something that ProChess did in their, um, I think one or two years ago, where they had required players for two cameras, one pointing their face, the other one monitoring the whole room. And they actually required um, of that second camera to show the player and their computer. So there are a lot of um, little nuances that you can come up uh, to ensure. Obviously, is it feasible for 100 players? No, not really um, for the two camera setup. Uh, but one camera setup, it's actually is possible. And so um, I very much encourage you if you're really um, concerned about uh, fair play, um, ensure that they are joining the Zoom call and, um, and you can uh, monitor the game. <coughs> and, then, um, and then you can actually control who can play. So if you're worried about cheating, don't let the anonymous players in. That's one of the uh, straightforward um, way to screen players because whoever gave, gives their name to the account that's a deterring factor. Um, we have a question, how can you determine cheater with video and Zoom call? Um, the eye movement, uh, the clicking. Um, so there's a lot of um, 
little nuances where you can see whether you can correlate the game and the time control and the time pressure and the accuracy with the video. If you put two and two together and you suspect what are the, the moves that the player is cheating, you will be able to monitor their movements a little bit. Um, um, I was going to, yep. Josh, Josh Heben, um, or Hyben, I'm not sure how to say your name. I'm, I apologize if I got it wrong. Um, he asked a question about like, if you are rating a game or you're running a rated online tournament and somebody is caught cheating by, you know, whatever methods the website used to do that, do you submit the game as a loss to us chess? My, my reaction is I would. Um, and then I would follow up and try to say like, hey, this person cheated in my tournament. Um, but is there anyone here who would disagree with that that uh, may have a better opinion on that? I guess I, we're I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I think I think it's you're correct. I think. Yeah, I mean, cheating is cheating, and we generally forfeit the games of cheaters when caught. Um, so I, that's that's what I would do as a tournament director. I would absolutely submit it as a loss. And if it was a super egregious cheating, I would re recommend, you know, go in the ethics committee route if you actually had some proof or some way to know. Uh, but that's where it gets kind of tough because you can't always know or investigate when something gets flagged. I know on chess.com, you can, you know, email chess.com and say, hey, what happened? And they can probably figure that out for you and, and let you know something that may or may not be of, of helpfulness. With Lee Chess, I'm not so sure that uh, that's as easy to do. And I'm certain with ICC, it'd be the same as chess.com. You could talk to them and they would. Yeah, you just, you just message Speedtrap as our team. Speedtrap. So you just message oh, okay. Speedtrap, username, and they go to work. Yep. So, so yeah, I, I would say at a minimum to answer Josh's question, yes, submit it as a loss. We can always sort it out later if there's a problem. You know, there's all kinds of cheaters out there. I mean, every oh, yeah. kind imaginable. Um, the, the, the not so bright ones are running Fritz or, or Stockfish or some other engine on their machine and that's easily spotted by probably all three sites. <clears throat> they're able to see the executable and, and that game is immediately uh, flagged um, by the system. And then there are those that uh, will slip in a few moves through the game. Maybe they get by with one, two maybe, but eventually they're, uh, they're caught. Um, and, uh, yeah, and go ahead. And the other one is that uh, uh, whatever you offer the tournament, right the more you offer the more likely you are going to have cheaters and then the more you offer um, as a reward um, the more diligent work you should do regarding fair play screening so if you're running a free tournament where the the reward is really just the glory that i won the tournament you know it's less you're gonna have cheaters but it's a little less likely to have cheaters but if you are going to award ten thousand uh, dollars along the online tournament then you really have to make sure that you're doing everything possible or possibly other rewards on this on stake the higher the stake the more likely they're going to be cheaters but at the same time we, we um, i had this discussion with other organizers that the rate that the cheaters are caught is quite good. People, uh, platforms are catching cheaters. So it's our hope that uh, the rate that they are catching is higher than the rate of actually new cheaters are born. So hopefully uh, this, we are heading towards the uh, little bit more cleaner place. So um, let's, let's hope. You're, you're also gonna have um, the very proud father standing behind his son and uh, yeah. making suggestions. There's, it's yeah. a, myriad, a myriad of uh, um, possibilities. And, and yes, when we were running major money events, we, we had serious uh, grandmasters I had to be on the phone with uh, asking them to bow out gracefully. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, you know, a consent, consent form or, or uh, an acknowledgement form that if, if you are running a, um, 
tournament that you would like to award some prizes or, or um, trophies, uh, maybe that usually also helps um, or just monitor the, as the parent to monitor the room and give evidence that he's monitored, they are monitoring. So there's all, always um, use, your, use your creativity to, to monitor um, the tournament. Uh, I wanted to touch base on chess kid uh, just a little bit um, and um, I'm guessing uh, similar restrictions are true for Lee chess and ICC so that the chat function is limited uh, so um, it's not just for the players but for the organizers as well so communication is a lot more important um, communicate with your kids, with your students, with your parents, explain them how to how a tournament is run. I'm running um, webinars and, and or trainings for our kids how to join the tournament and answering questions. So take the time because if you put in the time to explain uh, your students how, to, how these tournaments are run and what time control means and why they have to wait around for the second round to be prepared, just imagine in your over the board tournament they go out they run around and you have to make a big loud announcement that next round is starting you can't do that online right your voice is not loud enough to go <laughs> go all around the neighborhood so just use your use email communication and use um training use webinars use um uh, video calls to to do that um Many organizers are doing a live Zoom call while their kids are playing so they can do these announcements. Um, but be creative, uh, but also know that kids need a little bit more uh, hand holding and explaining. Um, and uh, the last uh, slide I wanted to mention is that um, we touch based on tournaments, the traditional Swiss type of tournaments. There are obviously other type of online events. Uh, arenas is uh, originated from Lee Chess, where you just let everyone in to a virtual room and let them play with each other. Uh, scoring is a little bit different, uh, both on uh, Lee Chess and Chess.com. They award two points for winning, one point for drawing, and zero for losing, and they award extra points for streak if you have a winning streak. That creates an interesting matchup and creates opportunities for lower rated players to uh, really be successful and win that type of event, which is, can be really fun. And as um, I think Ryan, you had a point, good point where you have beginner players, they don't need to understand the pairing system. They just want to play. I think that was a really great point. Yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> The other thing is it's a club matches and I want to use this opportunity to promote uh, collaborations around the nation. So I've seen the list of uh, attendees. I'm so happy because we have so many uh, uh, you joining all across the United States and let's use this opportunity to connect with each other and build collaborations and use chess to connect and, and uh, come together and form a big community. Club matches are perfect. You get in touch with another uh, organizer and saying, we would like to have a club match and our players versus your players. And it's a fun, fun event. The highest rated is going to play with the other clubs highest rated, the second highest rated with the second highest rated. And it's a very fun setup. And on chess.com, it's two games played only. They are playing with that particular player, both with white and black. And uh, after the first game, the colors flip. And it, they count automatically. The points are counting automatically. So if you don't have to um, challenge uh, your friends or give out personal challenges, it's all handled for, your, for you. Um, so it's a very fun way to, to collaborate, to have fun and connect with other, other chess clubs, regardless of how far they are from you. So I encourage you to do that. And there are also simuls. Um, I know Lee Chess is actually a very good platform to giving simuls. And I've been getting Grandmaster offers that, hey, Judith, let's do a simul on Lee Chess. So I have to actually learn that, how to do that. But this is also some of the opportunities that, uh, that you might want to explore. Um, Ryan or, or Marty, do you guys want to uh, add anything to this um, slide? 
Uh, no, I'm okay. No, I, I'm good. Sounds good. Um, at this point, uh, first I would like to thank uh, USGS for their support, and uh, we also would like to thank USGS Trust and uh, the Flower Foundation um, because they provided a grant, or which of uh, the professional closed captioning was um, was provided or is provided uh, to you guys. Um, and if you guys have any questions now, uh, please feel free to put in the chat and uh, Pete, Ryan, Marty, or myself will um, address it. Yeah, thank you everybody for being here tonight. And a big thank you to Judith also for putting this together. No, thank you everyone. It's, it's been a really wonderful opportunity and, and good. If you guys have any questions, uh, shoot me an email or everyone's email on the very beginning of the slide and let me go in the beginning so that you guys can see everyone's emails there. Um, I'm sure each and every one of us can direct their question to the appropriate channel. Um, um, someone is asking, how do we get approval for USGS for rated events? Pete? Well, I mean, as long as you are, you know, as long as you have a certified tournament director and you are a current affiliate, um, that's really all you need. Um, if you're referring to uh, certifying your affiliate with chess.com, uh, you can do that on the link I put earlier in the chat. I'll try to find it again. Uh, and I believe also uh, Marty touched on that in his portion uh, with ICC in terms of how to, uh, who to contact um, to, to register your affiliate with them directly as well. So really all you need to do that is, um, you know, be, have a certified TD and be a current US Chess affiliate and that's it. Um, and then you can contact wh whichever platform you'd like to run an event on and, uh, and get set up. I, I'd like to mention uh, for ICC, uh, we're giving six months free to everybody and that may go on until this crisis is over, which could be God forbid much longer. Um, so worry not about any fees being charged. Of course, you got to pay your rating fees if you're a TD and want to run a USCF event and submit it yourself with our grid that we produce or you produce having run it and been trained. But all the players, all, all people that you have members or children that are in your group are able to play for fun 24-7 in a chat safe mode and they can use our learning center. They can watch over 3000 videos that we've created for study from beginner Joel Benjamin on to you know, advanced uh, uh, study. So the whole site is gratis for the time uh, until we get back to hopefully a new normal that's decent. That, that's really great, uh, Marty. So thank you. Um, Catherine was asking, uh, what can we do about uh, technological problems um, uh, and internet connection, uh, meaning loss of meaningful time or mouse malfunction and everything? Um, it's a tough one. It's a heartbreaking problem, especially with kids when they they really can't be faulted for any techn uh, technical problem. But unfortunately, this is just life and you have to be, uh, it's my personal opinion that you just have to be um, honest with them and say, this happens, this is part of the online playing, the risk and that in an internet will drop and you just have to either be really fast and hotspot yourself or fix the Wi-Fi, or you will lose the game. There's nothing you can do, unfortunately, about that. I would also um, put forward that every player is under the same conditions in that scenario, too. I mean, meaning that anyone can lose internet connection. That, that can happen to any of us. So Exactly. Uh, and, yeah. and the grandmasters are not immune to this. Uh, uh, Ralph Mamadov, uh, we often speak, and every time we speak, he brings it up. Oh, Judith, remember that three years ago when you had me on Pro Chess League, I had that internet and I lost a crucial match. And yes, we lost the we lost the match of that because of his internet connection. But there's no way we can get that match back, uh, point back or game point back. So unfortunately, 
this is just life. And uh, what you should encourage them to view is that this is online play. This is for fun, uh, especially if you're not rating it. But even if you're rating it, it's online rating. It's not your over the board rating. So try to emphasize the fun, um, fun of the playing and just keep playing because if you keep playing, these issues will eliminate themselves. Uh, mouse lips. You will learn how to do that if you uh, if you don't pull your king um, to uh, all the way to the side and it won't castle you first. You're not going to make that same mistake probably twice or three times because you learn how to castle online um, properly. So um, things like this, you just have to to uh, encourage everyone to to play and practice. <coughs> Now, if you're the organizer, and um, I want to point out an example that um, happened with the um, with the um, uh, Andrea Botta or, or um, Alexander Botas and Jennifer Shahadi's tournament this past uh, Saturday, is that the leading uh, one of the leading players actually disconnected last game, so they used the organizer discretion of uh, solving that problem. So that also gives you the right to be be strong and be confident that you're the organizer of the tournament. So while you shouldn't do anything that's uh, that goes against the rules, but you also should use your organizer discretion and and solve problems that you feel is correct, and especially when. Uh, if consulting with others, I would definitely consult with a few other organizers, and I, um, I know for sure Alexandra did that, and Jennifer did the same thing. So uh, just think creatively as an organizer. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, no, we've mostly got the ones asked already answered in chat, I believe. Yeah. I'll just I'll just finish with with one thing instead of trying to type uh, all this out. Um, so this is in response to Henry. He asked if we could uh, create a document with all of the links that we put in chat. Um, I just want to let everyone know uh, that we are working right now on creating a new section of the website. It's actually up uh, specifically for running online events. Um, so I'm going to put that link in chat right now. This is essentially a document with all the links that, that we used in chat. However, I think, uh, Ryan, if you, want to, if you want to go ahead and create that document anyway, it's probably a good idea because I think a couple might be missing from there at this time. Bookmark that, check back regularly. That is going to update and change. Eventually, we're going to have everything there. Uh, we'll have links to the forums you need. We'll have um, information from our different partners, uh, ICC, chess.com, et cetera. Um, that that will update and change and that will improve and there will be more info for people who are interested in playing in or running online events. Um, so right now it's got an FAQ, which I think you many, many of the people in chat would find very useful. It's got a couple videos and a couple links. It will improve and there will be more items added there in the future. So bookmark it and check it regularly. And what I will also do, I will update the slide uh, um, with uh, some of these links that we used in the chat. And and uh, I know Carol will be sending out the slides again. So um, we'll have that updated. And uh, to answer Tom's question, yes, it will up, uh, it will be up on, on uh, YouTube, um, US Chess um, YouTube, I think. And the next webinar, we are going to talk about small clubs and inviting any organizers uh, who are um, who has currently a smaller club, how to start their tournament life, how to start up, um, to start with small tournaments, what you have to do, how you have to plan out the tournament. Um, kind of Greg Phillips in the chat. Uh, I know I've worked with him uh, designing his first. Uh, Tournament. So I will basically do more or less the same. Uh, we'll have uh, Corey will come online uh, next time and help us, as well as uh, Glenn Panner will be here to help us. So it will be a, a fun webinar if you can join us in two weeks. All right. Well, I think 
that sounds like everything. I think the chat's dying down in terms of extra questions. <laughs> if anybody has any questions, just email us and we will answer them accordingly and uh, we'll see everybody next time. Yes, thank you so much everyone for joining. Thank you.